In a previous video, we took a look at the Dell Aurora R12 from Alienware, and this featured an i5 11400F and an RTX 3080 Ti. And the only reason I bought this was because it came up on a Black Friday sale for $2,900 Aussie dollars, which is a little over $2,000 US dollars. Now at this price, in this current market environment, especially with graphics cards being priced so high, the price of this whole system actually came to around the price of the graphics card alone, which means that not only did we get an RTX 3080 Ti, but we also got pretty much the whole rest of the system thrown in for nothing. But in today's video, we're gonna be upgrading this system and hopefully changing a few things around for the better to see if we can get not only better specs in it, but also better temperatures. And we're gonna be using the i9 11900K and we're gonna be upgrading the RAM from 16 gigabytes to 32 gigabytes. And then we're also gonna be adding in a four terabyte hard drive. If you guys wanted to upgrade your Dell Aurora R12 for cheap, then this video might be for you. But for me, I'm gonna hopefully flip this thing and make a bit of profit riding the coattails of Dell. Are you tired of seeing this annoying activate Windows message? Then if so, today's video sponsor SCD Keys has you covered. For as little as $14 using the coupon code BFTYC, you can get activated today. Works for Windows 11 Pro too. Links in description below. This is basically a new PC and this thermal paste is already like literally crusty and dry. I mean, if thermal paste is good, usually it'll retain that wet, moist feeling even months after it's been used. So Dell, I believe Dell have used some pretty cheap thermal paste here, which is a good thing that we've found this because we can fix it very quickly and easily. So we've just switched the RAM to 32 gigabytes. We've added that i9-11900K in the system, and we've also added a hard drive in. Now, upgrading your Aurora, I will say that you may come into some issues where initially when you turn the PC on, there might be a light flashing at the front. You may need to power this thing on and off a few times, then you should be greeted with a screen that says you've changed your system memory or something's changed in your system. And then from there, you can just go into the BIOS and make sure everything checks out. In this case, we went into the BIOS, we had our 11900K showing up now, 32 gigabytes of RAM, and also the ability to lock in the XMP profiles. Now, if you're in the Dell BIOS and you wanna overclock on, say for instance, an 11900K, I wouldn't recommend it just by looking at the feature set, at least the first time doing it, so. So after spending a few hours now tuning the system, there's actually some pretty bad news in relation to using an i9-11900K with the Aurora R12. And it comes in the form of the motherboard having limits. And then therefore the CPU is trying to overcome those limits, but the CPU is essentially then being throttled by the motherboard. And so what this means is if you're doing uh, tasks like heavy video editing, 
or if you're running a lot of simulations, then you could be met with suboptimal performance. Take for instance, the Cinebench R23 score, which we will show you guys out of the box, we get sub 12,000 points. Now there's also in the BIOS, two other overclocking settings that we talked about before and locking in both those profiles actually saw the performance drop even worse than compared to that of the default profile. And then the second one dropped even worse than the level one overclock, even though they were meant to do the opposite and they're meant to give you more performance. So what we found at these levels was out of the box, we're met with a power limit of 142 watts. Then on the level one overclock in the BIOS, we're met with roughly 160 watts and then level two, we're met with 172 watts. So even on that maximum overclock with that 172 watts, I was actually happy to see that the motherboard wasn't getting too hot. The maximum temperature I saw was 76 degrees, and that actually isn't too bad, especially in the long term, where I've seen these temperatures in the past go past 100 degrees. Anywhere over 90 degrees is a bit of a worry, and you should be fixing that. But anything under 80 degrees, I consider okay especially since we're running a very strenuous benchmark. So the motherboard was okay. And even in this sarcophagus style case, we don't have to worry about adding any cooling because we're limited in that we can't get over this. And we also tried the Intel Extreme Utility to try and override these limits because Dell know that the components that they're putting in, especially in the case of the motherboard, it's a mediocre board. And so they know if the limits are unlocked, then they could have a lot of returns on their hands. So they're putting that in place to protect themselves against warranty claims. Though it's not all bad news for this Aurora R12. If you guys have seen in the past, I'm actually a big fan of undervolting where you can extract a lot more performance given certain limits. And in this case, since we do have that motherboard power limit, what I decided to do was actually undervolt the CPU, where after a little bit of tuning and having a lot of resets and even telling me the overclocking failed, even though it wasn't overclocking, we managed to arrive at a sweet spot of a minus 120 millivolts. And I'll show you guys the core ratio, tapered down to 48, 47, 46, and 45. And here's where we saw actually a big performance uplift to now over 14,000 points day in, day out with Cinebench R23, which is still over a thousand points off the default 11900K on a high-end motherboard, but at least it's not as big as a difference as it was before. And in fact, more good news to come out of this is that we did drop the motherboard's temperatures slightly and the CPU temperatures are now maxing out at 83 degrees. But what we're gonna do right now is add an additional 12 centimeter fan to this water cooler to see if we can drop those temperatures even further and then we'll also run some gaming benchmarks with three different profiles to see how much performance you're getting out of the box versus the undervolting versus the 11900K on a higher end motherboard. And we just finished up with a heap of different testing. The first one is the water cooler and the two fans that we changed over for the massive big Nidec fan that Dell includes on the 120 mil cooler. And what we saw here was we had that 83 degrees and then that dropped down to now 75 degrees. So we've got a drop of roughly eight degrees. And the good news here was that we'll then able to get an extra 100 megahertz out of our custom undervolt at 4.6 gigahertz as opposed to 4.5. Now, this is where we're gonna go on to the gaming benchmark numbers where in the previous video we did, we tested at 4K and 1080p and we found there wasn't, of course, much of a difference to be had at 4K, even with an 11400F versus a 12900K. So testing those numbers isn't going to make much of a difference, especially if it's high settings at 4K which is what we were testing. And that's where the GPU just gets maxed out 
and it becomes a GPU benchmark. But we also decided to throw in some extra numbers so you guys can get a feel for if you want to sort of do what we've done in today's video, you can extract the extra performance, but on the same token, I'm not sure if Dell sells this motherboard on the Aurora R12 with an 11900K out of the get-go, because if it is the same motherboard with the same power limits, what you're gonna get is a throttling 11900K out of the box. But stepping things down now to 1080p, here is where we saw a performance uplift versus the 11400F, and also if we decide to do the undervolting, which I do recommend, we can also extract a little bit more performance versus the default out of the box settings for gaming. So just like we saw on the Cinebench settings, we were seeing that in the gaming numbers. Although of course, not as dramatic and as big as the Cinebench numbers, but still a gain to be had nonetheless. And then I also decided to throw the 11900K on a test bed with a better motherboard and just show you what you're missing out on, which isn't a whole lot of performance once we do the undervolting. But first up is Age of Empires 4, and here is where we saw a performance uplift of roughly 35% going with the 11900K over the 11400F. And then moving things across to Borderlands 3, we saw a nice uplift here in performance that came closer to that of the 12900K and bridging that gap between the 11400F and the better DDR5 CPU. Though, the last game we've got here is Fortnite. And here's where we saw a big difference between the 11400F and the 12900K with the RTX 3080 Ti at 1080p. And the 12900K did bridge this gap, but not in the same percentages as the other games. So it does look like the new Chapter 3 update with Fortnite is loving those new 12th gen CPUs. And now it's time for a conclusion on the Aurora R12 upgraded from an 11400F to an i9-11900K. And I am a little bit disappointed with the motherboard. So in the previous video, we found that the case was the weakest link. In this video upgrading it, we found that now the case and the motherboard are the weakest links if you wanna go with a higher end CPU option. The actual cooler itself, the 120 mil cooler, uh, when we changed the fans over, that did a phenomenal job given what it was served and this was up to 160 watts. The 11900K can juice up to around 200 watts, even out of the box. So it is power hungry, but we're not that far off. If we had a good motherboard, then I'm sure this 120 mil cooler with the two fans installed would still be able to keep it under control. And keep in mind, this is a 28 degrees Celsius ambient environment. So it's not exactly as cool as other places in the world. Though the main saving grace for this build in the end was actually that power supply where since Dell did include a solid 1000 watt power supply with what I believe is solid ripple suppression, that means that we're able to get that minus 120 millivolt that we saw in the Intel Extreme tuning utility. And so that then enabled us to match the CPU with the motherboard's limits. So picture this, before you do this, what's happening is the CPU wants to go higher than it is, but the motherboard's limiting it. So then the CPU is all confused, and that's why you see all the clocks jumping up and down. But after we sort of drop the voltages down, drop the speeds down, we then match that motherboard limit, and we get pretty good performance, even though it's still not as good as the 11900K can get on a high-end motherboard, it still is decent. And when I go to flip this thing, I'll be happy to know that the person buying it isn't gonna be getting a stuttering mess. They're still gonna be able to use most of the potential of the 11900K, and they've got a pretty good looking system. Though, we've also got, out of this whole ordeal, an 11400F, 16 gigabytes of RAM left over. I'll put the total bill cost that this thing cost me on the screen for you guys, but I'm gonna estimate what the 11400F and the two eight gigabyte sticks of RAM are worth to me, since I will be putting them in a separate gaming PC, which I will flip. But what we're gonna do here with this build is I'm going to hopefully try and flip this now for around four and a half thousand Aussie dollars. And so hopefully in this process, I can make roughly a thousand dollars profit. If I can get that, that'll be very solid. It'll be a learning experience for me because some people messaged me after this uh, the original video and they're like, Brian, are you taking a big risk? Are you okay? You sure this is gonna work out? And my answer to that is, I don't know. <laughs> I just don't know. And that's why I just try new things. And in the process, you guys get to see if the Aurora R12 
is a decent buy or if it's just total garbage that you should avoid. And in that case, out of the box, as we said in the previous video, with the 11400F, it was a decent buy. With the upgrades, if you know what we're doing in today's video and you're happy sort of custom tuning it and you can get it for a really good price, then you can get around the issues that it does present with, with an 11900K. But that being said, we're not gonna try and change the motherboard around, we're not gonna change the case around because then that'll take away from the whole Alienware experience. But also there might be some people out there like, why don't you just change the motherboard? And you just can't, all pun intended, with this case because you've got that Alienware case, you've got the proprietary connector for the front panel, which also controls the RGB on this motherboard. So if you change the motherboard around, which in this case, it's also a micro ATX, so it's not a full size ATX, you will come into issues using another motherboard. Even though the basic parts will work, you'll just have a case with no RGB. I'd have no idea how the um, power button would work after that too. So it's just not worth it in the end. You will get met with some proprietary brick walls. It's honestly just gonna take you so long to get your head around, try and work it. And then the person buying it isn't also, they're not gonna have an original Alienware PC. So there's those few factors that I'm putting in especially when it comes to the time that I'm outlaying versus what I intend to try and make in terms of profit on this build. Though that aside, build ended up being okay, not the greatest, but certainly far from the worst. And that was the Aurora R12 experience. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to hit that like button for us. Hope you guys having a happy new year's all around the world, wherever you are, staying healthy. And also instead of the question of the day, there's something I've got to address. And that is, and we did a recent giveaway video, it's still running for another few days, another four days, so make sure you get in with a chance. But on that video, there's all this spam, and I'm trying to delete it, I'm trying to ban these spam accounts, but they're, con they're getting through and they're contacting some people, and people are messaging me like, is this a scam, Brian? I'm like, yes, that's a scam. They're trying to basically charge you for shipping and saying you won the giveaway when I haven't even drawn the winner yet, and then they're just trying to scam you out of shipping costs. So I'm not charging anyone for shipping. It's a complete free giveaway. You don't pay a cent if you win that PC, but do be aware, I'm getting so many messages of people from these spam accounts that they're trying to scam people. So just be careful of that. I don't want you guys getting hosed. That's the last thing. Yeah, that's my one main thing around Tech Yes Cities. The motto is don't get hosed. And so, and don't try to get hosed. Anyhow guys, with that aside, if you're enjoying that content and you stayed this far, then make sure you hit that sub button, ring that bell. And also if you wanna get some behind the scenes access, some special perks, then you can join and become a member for as little as a dollar a month. And of course, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out for now, bye.